I would love to get started by uh, asking you a little bit about your personal uh, story in healing. How did you embark on your journey? I was really sick. In my um, late 20s, I developed chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, and it was a really bad case, um, so bad that I couldn't work. I had to move home with my father, stepmother, and quit work, of course, and sleep, <laughs> sleep 12 hours a day, <laughs> wake up tired, <laughs> and I only seemed to have a few hours where I could do heart, uh, just a few things, and then I, I was um, crashing again. So I decided that I had to do something because doctors didn't know what to do for me. started reading some books, <laughs> the health food stores, uh, uh, go and talk to people, and realized that my diet was just horrible, all wrong. I didn't like vegetables, and I often ate from fast food restaurants, and I ate sweets and all the things that create inflammation in the body and depress the immune system. And um, I'd always had a challenge with my immune system um, since childhood. My mother died of cancer when I was six years old, and she had cancer before I was even born. Um, I'm convinced because at four she was diagnosed with breast cancer and, and then died two years later. And we know that cancer doesn't just suddenly develop. It's developing in the body uh, for years usually. So I think that um, she had a weakened immune system and I inherited that. And so it just came early on in my life to uh, a real crisis point. And so I thought, okay, um, something got me here. Something can get me out. Mm -hmm. um, that, and if I get to the root of this, then I can correct my situation. So I bought my juicer, my first juicer, and a whole bunch of produce, and I just jumped in um, to the whole thing with a lot of uh, effort and um, commitment. And I did a five-day vegetable juice fast. On the fifth day, my body expelled a tumor about the size of a golf ball. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> with veins attached. I was flabbergasted. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in my life. I didn't have it tested. People ask me that all the time. So I don't know if it was cancerous or if it was a polyp. I am certain, though, whatever it was, it was not good, and I was not heading in a good direction if it was a polyp. I'm quite certain that it would have mm. become cancerous. Either way, it's incredible. It's incredible. And so I thought, okay, my health is going to turn right around now. But no, it didn't. Um, I got a little worse before I got better. I was detoxing. Mm. And I didn't know anything about detox reactions. But some, something in my soul just said, you're on the right track and don't leave this. Even though my dad kept saying, because he'd see these symptoms and I seemed to be getting worse, he'd say, I think you're killing yourself with this diet. And I said, well, if I do that, I'm going to die on carrot juice because <laughs> um, I am committed to this program and it just seems right to me. How could, how could vegetable juices and vegetables be wrong, you know? So Absolutely. I stuck with it for three months with ups and downs and many days were downs where toxicity was really coming out, all this stuff that was stored up in my liver and tissue spaces and cells. But one day I woke up and I thought, wow, somebody gave me a new body in the middle of the night. I felt absolutely fabulous like jogging. And prior to that, I, I hadn't even been able to walk around the block because I was afraid I'd pass out somewhere. Wow. Um, I was just that weak and tired. So I moved back then to California, back to my life, my friends, uh, work, and um, slowly started going back to some of my old habits. And then my symptoms started showing up again, which really scared me because it's just chronic fatigue is nasty stuff. Absolutely. I felt like I had the flu all the time, mm. you know, kind of feverish and uh, weak and swollen glands mm. and like I had the flu all right. of the time. It's just nasty stuff. And I, that really scared me because once um, you taste health and what it is to feel really alive, you never want to lose that. So I thought, okay, this wasn't a cure. This has to be a way of life. And I've got to find a plan I can live with. 
and I've had ups and downs through the years, times where I thought, oh, well, I can just eat a little of this, you know, <laughs> and I've realized I can't, I just can't cheat. I have one of those systems that it seems to be very, very sensitive. Mm. So I've had to stick with uh, a really good diet and people so often say to me um, how terrified they are of, of making the changes and like they'll never be able to enjoy life or have fun again or uh, go to a party. Just the opposite. And, yeah, and I say it's not true. Um, I live a full life and I uh, travel a lot and I, I'm on the go all the time and I find things to eat and I do have fun. And so you, people can do it and change their lives too. Absolutely. I. Your story is, is, is very inspiring. I mean, I hear a lot of inspiring stories. I, I look for them, I rejoice in them, and, and I embrace them. But I have to say what you've been through sounds remarkably similar to what people with my condition goes through. Um, go through uh, with histamine intolerance, mast cell activation, mastocytosis, systemic mastocytosis. We all have a cluster of symptoms that you, you described as having yourself. And while I believe that, you know, there's a place for traditional medicine and diagnosis, I, I sometimes wonder if people get a little bogged down in the diagnosis and figuring out exactly what's wrong with them rather than just throwing themselves 100% into healing, which is what you did. Yes. And I believe that is the answer. Um, there is a gentleman in the UK who's working on a documentary and asked me the question on there, uh, what if there was just one disease basically and what if there was just one answer? Wow. And I said, basically, I can adhere to that because I believe there are two or maybe three basic causes of most of the illness that people experience and that is um, undernutrition or deficiencies, excesses, eating too much would be um, uh, maybe number two and number three would be toxicity. Absolutely. And if you turn all of that around, the body heals. And I've seen people heal as you have of probably just about everything that has been named and diagnosed. But in Western medicine, we want so much to compartmentalize people. We want to put them in these categories. Mm -hmm. Your, you know, brain, heart, liver, um, bone of this. We're all one being. Mm -hmm. We're one person and the liver affects so many things and the gallbladder and the kidneys and the blood. And if we get things cleaned up and our organs of elimination cleaned up and we began to put vibrant, superior nutrition into our body, like in the way of vegetables, organic vegetables and the vegetable juices and live, the, the live foods, we can really turn things around along with detoxing our organs of elimination and of certainly not overeating and not eating anything that's refined, processed, um, and then discovering um, as many of the people I know that you work with, with histamine intolerance, which foods are not your, um, your foods of life? There are, you know, uh, the saying, there's one man's food is another man's poison. <laughs> so we've, we've got to discover what's our food of life and what's our poisons. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to ask the um, the three months that you were talking about, where you uh, where, where you experienced your your um, your healing, was that primarily juice, or were you juicing in addition to uh, a, a, not a regular diet, but in addition to eating um, whole foods? I juiced for five days straight uh, mm. with no no solid foods, but then I did um, continue juicing, and I added in vegetables, salads, stir fries. I added mm. some brown rice, things like that. I went pretty much vegan for that three months. I'm not vegan now. Mm. And I found that my body does need animal protein. It needs clean animal protein, not yep. <laughs> the factory farm raised um, uh, proteins, but free range and organic and pastured and so mm. forth. So I find that I need on most days to get some of that. But when I do cleansing programs, as I've been doing this last week, I, I didn't have very much. And I'm about to do 
um, a, a liver gallbladder flush next week. So I'll have a couple of days where I won't eat any animal protein and I'll just primarily juice and do green smoothies. And um, I have a liver flush drink I drink in the morning, which is lemon juice and lime juice and some ginger and garlic and some olive oil and water. And I put a couple ice cubes in because mm. it's really bad to me when it's warm. <laughs> so, <laughs> I make it cooler. And I, I, in fact, I'm sipping on that now. And so <laughs> I start doing that before my major flush, mm. just starting to prepare my liver and gallbladder for um, the major flush coming. And then I'll do a couple of days of just liquid and pureed things. Mm. It's winter. It's very cold here. So I'll do some pureed warm soups and um, green smoothies and lots of juices and herbal teas and water and my liver flush drink in the morning. And then I'll do the major flush of the olive oil and grapefruit juice. Or you can use lemon or apple juice with that. And so um, I have days of cleansing and then days of building. And it it all fits into a rhythm of life. Hmm. You know, it's keeping the body cleaned out and healthy and strong. Sounds amazing. Sounds deliciously amazing and very similar to what I do, which is why I love your work. Oh, Um, thank you. Hugely inspiring. Um, In your opinion, what is better? I mean, I can probably guess given the the name that you chose for yourself, but juicing or blending, what are the benefits of each and the drawbacks? Both have benefits. Um, Juice I really recommend because it's broken down so much that the body can absorb it very, very quickly. Mm. Uh, And it doesn't have the fiber in there. As with a green smoothie, a lot of people have a lot of fiber in their green smoothies. Some people don't. depends on how you make them. But this juice, this pure live juice is going to go right into your system very quickly and um, through your digestive system, which many people have impaired digestive systems today because mm. we've grown up on gluten and sweets and so many processed foods that really impact, negatively impact our gut, the entire digestive system. So um, people often are malnourished even though they're well-fed mm. or overfed. Maybe I shouldn't say well-fed, but overfed, but malnourished because they're not absorbing even what they eat. So the juices are going right in there. And I found for myself and for many of the people that I work with, the juices bring about healing where nothing else does for them. But I make um, a green smoothie often, and that's my breakfast, by juicing first and then pouring the juice in my Vitamix, or you can use a blender, adding an avocado, and I add some supplemental things to that, Mm -hmm liquid iodine and um, if I have some little baby greens or um, fine things that don't juice well I'll add it there like parsley or baby spinach mm-hmm. those little um, greens don't juice very well um, except in a cold pressed or masticating type of juicer so uh, then I blend that up and that's my breakfast on many days with um, some sunflower seeds on top or ground almonds or ground flax seeds, and it's very sustaining. But if you want to really um, begin to do some healing and really get the vibrancy, I call it, of the live food, there's nothing like the juice. Some people say to me they've been to um, one one of the stores like Costco or Sam's Club and seen a demonstration, and the people there tell them, that a Vitamix uh, smoothie is a juice and that you should have all that fiber. <laughs> and, and then they're trying to uh, crunch down or swallow a very fibrous concoction, mm. like with uh, some carrot fiber pulp, you would call it in there. Um, kale is pretty hearty, so <laughs> it, it's going to be fibrous or kind of gritty. People are trying to choke this down or strain it out. That is not a juice. Mm. And um, there's nothing wrong with fiber. I'm all for fiber and for eating a high-fiber diet. But that fiber is going to slow down your absorption of all of those wonderful nutrients that you want to get. If you're going to do a green smoothie like that, do some juice too and do your juice first. 
you're throwing down a huge amount of fiber straight into your stomach with no chance for the body to get ready for it, you know, with, with the chewing and the enzymes going. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and the body's saying, what is all of this, this big glob of fiber that I don't know what to do with? Um, and in fact, even they say, you know, the, the old adage, um, uh, chew, chew your juice, right. <laughs> even <laughs> drink your food and chew your juice so that we should, we should keep things in our mouth for a while mm-hmm. and so that they can begin, the enzymes of our mouth even can begin to break food down as it goes into our system. Uh, we do a lot of uh, retreats, my husband and I and a naturopathic doctor friend throughout the year, and I used to offer a colon cleanse on these retreats because they thought perfect time, you know, Mm -hmm. there are three days of juice fasting with uh, beginning of the week raw foods and end of the week raw foods, great time to add in the colon cleanse and the fiber. And I started getting so many problems. My naturopathic friend and I decided we can't introduce the colon cleanse fiber packets that week because people are getting so backed up and blocked up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they're just not ready for all of this fiber. So, right. yes, you do have to work into that of a high, high amount of fiber. That's that's very good to know. Um, how long after juicing um, or blending should you choose to, uh, should, the, uh, should your concoction be consumed? At what point does it start going off? Oh, yes, where you start losing way too much of your nutrients. I... You know, I tell people, though, be practical. Um, if you drink it, as soon as you make it, you're going to get the most out of it. That's mm. for sure. But I work with a lot of very busy people who get up really early, early, early. Um, I've had police officers, you know, <laughs> who have early mornings. They're out in the squad car all day. Mm. What on earth do they do? People who are, like, up at 4.30 in the morning, and they've got to catch a bus and and, uh, you know, they've got a really tough schedule. So I say, juice the night before. If, you know, do what's practical. Store it well uh, with as little air as the top of your jar as possible. Store it in the fridge. Keep it cold. Keep it in a, in a, a dark place and keep it covered. Um, and you'll lose the least amount of nutrients. And that's what I had to do to get well. I only had enough energy to stand up and juice kind of early afternoon. So I would make enough. I'd drink some right then, and then I would make enough to last through the rest of the day and uh, in the morning when I got up. So I got well doing that. Mm. But the ideal, that was not the ideal. Right. (laughs) The ideal is to make it uh, fresh, drink it right then, and you get the most nutrients. But I have people, even young moms, that work and they have to make big batches on the weekend and freeze them for the family so that they have something during Mm. the week. So I am also practical and people come to me and say, I can never juice because I have been told that there's nothing left in the juice after 30 minutes. Right. And I say, no, that's not true. Um, If you heated it, (laughs) that might be true. Or if you just left it sitting on the counter and open to air or sun shining on it, um, but if you, you know, if you protect it, you're going to have some nutrients left in there for sure. You'll lose some, but you're still, it's going to be better than anything else probably that you could drink. Does freezing fruit or foods negatively impact their nutrients, such as if we're freezing mango at home? Because a lot of people live in remote areas where they don't have access mm-hmm. to fresh fruit all year round. So would it be okay if they froze their fruits? Is it still a, a case of better than nothing? Yes, it absolutely is. In fact, there has been a study on that, and they found that some frozen vegetables and fruit actually were higher than in nutrients than the stuff on the grocery store shelf because that stuff had sat around for a while and lost some of its nutrients. Where wow. the frozen foods, the fruits and vegetables, had been frozen quickly after picking, and so it had more nutrient in it. Oh, that makes so much sense. Uh It does. So yes, I tell people, by all means, freeze your fruits and your vegetables. 
many people have big gardens, you know, in the summer, and then they don't know what to do with all that produce, and so freeze it, absolutely, or make juices out of it and freeze it in individual containers. Right, absolutely. Um, What do you consider to be the optimal fruit to vegetable ratio? It's uh, nearly all vegetables and very little fruit because that's my system. Mm. I can't use much fruit, I've found, and there are people I work with that can't either. So I can only have just a tiny little bit. And I, well, I can't even have anything really but lemon or lime. Mm. And um, occasionally I can have some grapefruit. I have to have very, very low sugar fruit. And there are people in that category that do. Um, People with yeast overgrowth and diabetics, hypoglycemia, um, and people with cancer Mm. fall into that category. And for those people, I say keep your sugars very low. Um, Some people can have like a half a green apple added to that. Others can't, and that's where we have to learn to listen to our bodies. What does it want? But there are other people that do fine with fruit and can have a ratio of about one quarter fruit to about three quarters vegetables. And I always say put some emphasis on some dark leafy greens. Always try to get some of those into everything you do because they're just so superior, so rich in nutrients and magnesium, which so many people are deficient in. They offer us uh, a good source of magnesium. So um, again, we need to all listen to our bodies. There are some people who can have a little bit of low sugar fruit like green apple or berries um, and, of course, lemon or lime. Most people can tolerate that mm. well. Um, there are people who have to keep carrots and beets low because those are the higher sugar vegetables. Mm. And we have to. there are some people who can't even have any of that that I've worked with, can't have any carrots, any beets, um, and can't have any fruit but maybe a little lemon or lime, and then they have to stick with the greens, like cucumber, celery, dark leafy greens, um, uh, they can have some maybe kohlrabi in there or um, oh, beet top. Fennel is another nice one. gives Love it an fennel. interesting flavor. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> and how long is optimal for a juice fast or a feast? And should we check in with a doctor before starting? Well... Uh, it's always a good idea to check in with a doctor <laughs> if you're going to do a longer-term juice feast. But um, if you're doing a short juice feast, one to two, three days like I did, is almost anybody can do that. And mm-hmm. you don't really need to unless you're in a severe situation. Some people on dialysis and that have kidney problems um, do need to check in, even if they're going to do a short juice fast, but most people don't. Um, They can do that and it's not a problem. But if you're going longer term and there are people who do, and I've worked with a gentleman who has lost 100 pounds and he has done 60 days at a time of juice feasting, but he's young and healthy. He's um, 39 (laughs) and, um, and healthy. And so he didn't check in with his doctor. He just did it. You know, and he was fine and just kept checking in with me and no symptoms and and feeling great. So um, it just depends on the person. But many people, I say, check in with your doctor and the doctors don't understand (laughs) juicing and tell them, oh, don't do that. It's way too much sugar Mm. because they, when they hear the word juice, they automatically think (laughs) fruit juice, straight (laughs) fruit juice bottled fruit juice, which has all the nutrients killed from it. So it is sugar water. And I wouldn't recommend that for anybody. So then they come back to me and say, oh, you know, I've been told don't do this. And it's just horrible. It's just sugar. And so, uh, you know, we, we have to, we're the master of our ships. Exactly. <laughs> so we have to find our way. And so maybe find a naturopathic doctor or another type of health professional. Some chiropractors are very well trained and can work with you Mm -hmm. and um, some acupuncturists and oriental medicine doctors are really great. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a doctor that understands this type of, of, uh, I call it 
uh, Hippocrates' medicine. Let mm-hmm. food be your medicine, medicine be your food, you know. If they understand that, right. then they can work with you. Or, or they could come to one of your workshops, of course. There, they, there you go. <laughs> uh, what are your favorite juice add-ons for uh, people with histamine intolerance or inflammatory conditions, things like spirulina, chlorella, you know, the, the kind of freeze-dried great stuff that you find uh, at Whole Foods? Oh, all of, all of the above you said, always add in ginger because mm. ginger has been proven in scientific studies to be an anti-inflammatory. And so it's, I put big chunks of ginger in all the juices I make. And in, and in my morning um, liver flush drink, I put a chunk of ginger. So I try to get that into everything I make. And, um, and then in the juices, of course, I've worked with some people with histamine um, intolerance problems, and you have to find the vegetables that your body can tolerate. So Absolutely. it's been kind of a trial and error for a lot of people. You know, try, try some of this, try some of that, see how you do, and your body will speak to you. For exactly. Sure. Have you come across many people or worked with a lot of people with uh, histamine issues, salicylates, fructose intolerance, or oxalate issues? I haven't had a huge number of people, just a few. So um, it, it's been interesting. I'm sure with the work you do, you've worked with many more people than I have. But I've seen successes. Okay, so I have this, uh, this great quote from Dr. Furman. I've chatted with him a couple of times. He told me, you can't put this problem, uh, histamine intolerance or mast cell disorders in a vacuum, such as avoiding histamine-containing foods while on a standard deficient and toxic diet. The body works in conjunction with thousands of complicated chemical reactions, and it's only with superior nutrition that histamine sensitivity can be better controlled. So exposure to thousands of phytochemicals and even to a low dose of histamine in their diet is good, not bad, and can offer hope of getting better in the years to come. Is that something that you've experienced yourself? Yes. Oh, and brilliant, <laughs> I would say. Um, his statement uh, is so right on. I have found that the diet is just key and crucial. And if you have these disorders, um, it's so important to stick with this incredibly life-giving diet and really discover which foods your body wants and which it ones it doesn't and just don't go there because I I've tried to cheat here and there and it seems like I would describe it as a climb up a mountain you know day by day you're getting a little better a little better a little better and then you kind of binge or you you go to this event and you eat things you know you shouldn't it's like you you don't fall two steps down that mountain you tumble down a long distance (laughs) And then you've got to climb back up and struggle and work to get there again. So I say to people, don't do it. It's just (laughs) not worth it. You had maybe five or ten minutes of pleasure in your mouth, and then you have days and days or weeks of feeling crummy again. Right. Because if you've got these disorders in your body, uh, it's it's not doing well to start with, and then you, you put in something that's like a poison for it, and then it's really... Um, struggles, and then it's a lot of work to get back to where you were. So the diet is just so important to follow closely. Absolutely. I have experienced that tumbling many times, and it it becomes uh, not depressing, but you just get tired of that tumble, and just when you fall, you just think, why why? Oh, why did I do that now? I, there's that long journey to getting back to, to where I was before. And it's just, it's dispiriting is what it is. And I just, I stopped doing it because I, I realized it just wasn't worth it in any way. I, I just, I couldn't do it. And now my mantra is uh, nothing tastes better than being healthy feels. You know, I love that. <laughs> I had a, a young woman <clears throat> say that to me who'd been really ill, and she had a lung condition that was slowly killing her. Oh. And she got on this program and just started turning it around, just totally turning it around to where her lungs were healing. 
she felt like she was actually going to live. And an uncle came by one day and brought some wine and said, you've got to try this. You've got to try it. And just kept after her. Oh, just to have a glass. It won't hurt you. And she had that and felt like all these symptoms were starting to pop back up again and like she had moved from the land of the living to the dying. And she wrote to me and said, nothing on earth tastes as good as good health. So you, <laughs> I put that on my website. You just nailed it. It is so true. <laughs> um, and just to wrap things up, I'd love to have, um, I'd love to get your opinion on the mind as a healing tool. Now, obviously, we, we know that we can make ourselves ill through stress, and we know that we can get better by paying ourselves some attention, by being good to ourselves. Could you please talk about your experiences in this? I love your question. The mind, the emotions are key. They may be one of the biggest keys. I don't know. <laughs> when we do our retreats, my husband, who is a psychotherapist and trained in behavioral medicine, does a variety of classes. Who am I? What is my purpose? How to de-stress, live from a happy heart, and mental and emotional uh, detox. And after the retreat ends, or at the end of the retreat, the comments as we go around the room the last night often goes to his classes as being the most important thing that happened for them all week. And we always just kind of smile because they have no idea that they're coming for that. And they always say that. You know, we thought we were coming for the, the uh, raw foods, the juicing. We, they found, you know, one of my books. I've got 21 books, so Juice Lady starts the title of most of them, and they, they thought they were coming just for that and discovered all of this other stuff that had been stuffed into their minds, stuffed into their emotions that was making them ill. And so often we have found that a turning point is to find those things that uh, events, traumas, um, horrible situations in people's past the things that they have held on to of resentments or bitterness or anger because of what had happened to them. And it all has to be let go of. Mm -hmm. And the purging of the soul we have found is either equal or more important to the cleansing and healing uh, foods for the body. And, and then to live his class, living from a happy heart, living from that positive attitude intercepting negative thoughts. We've had so many people that have become aware of that as they've gone through our week of, of, of healing, cleansing, and renewal and said, wow, I didn't ever realize that all these negative thoughts ran like a tape, like a movie in my mind. And I, uh, they'd say, I, I suddenly realize it now I'm intercepting it and now I'm changing that tape and I'm feeling like a new person and like I can live and like I can do this. And so it's just extremely, extremely important. And some often I found, in fact, nearly every person I've worked with who has a health challenge has had some difficulties in the past. Mm -hmm. Things that have happened to them that have been hurtful, painful, traumatic, abusive. Um, I've heard things that are horrific that have happened to people and you wonder, how they're even still here. And so all of that must be dealt with in a loving way. We must love ourselves and bring ourselves to life, our souls to life, and calling ourselves like that um, story in the New Testament of the Bible of Lazarus wrapped in burial clothes. <laughs> and I say to people so often, you may feel like this, and, and I felt like that. Like I was wrapped up like a mummy, and I've got to tear this stuff off so that I can live. And we must be gentle with ourselves as we go back to write letters of forgiveness or to cry our tears. Shower is a great place to do that, I found. <laughs> and, and to say, this is peeling off of me like layers of an onion. Don't expect yourself in one day, one setting, uh, session, whatever, to be um, cleansed and cleared of all of this. It is a process, 
and we go through it in stages and steps, and we have seasons of tears and seasons of joy and seasons of peeling off those layers of the onion of of the, the traumas that have happened in our lives, and it's all okay. Wherever we're at, the tears are wonderful. Um, the uh, facing of, of the grief or the sorrow or whatever we face is all good, and, and it's all bringing us to a place of wholeness. And so in between those <laughs> steps, <laughs> try to live each day as we teach from a happy heart and, and choose each day to be, find things you're thankful for. Which books would you recommend for that would particularly uh, work for people with histamine issues uh, at the moment? And I would love to know where we can join your workshop and where we can find information. I assume it's on the website, but just let us know. Yes, thank you for asking. The book I would recommend um, is the Juice Ladies Living Foods Revolution. It's got a lot of green juice recipes in it, green smoothies, and menu plans, and some raw food recipes, and um, and then some raw and cooked uh, menu plans, and a lot of information there on different aspects of health and cleansing the organs of elimination and so forth. So I would start there if you want also to get more information on cleansing the different organs of elimination, juicing, fasting, and detoxing for life. It's a really, really good book for that. And I take you through the different organs of elimination and systems of your body to cleanse them. And cleansing is always a key to healing, recovery, and remaining healthy. Um, For my workshops and my conferences and retreats, you can go to my website, JuiceLadyInfo.com. Click on Retreats, and it'll give you all of the schedule that we have so far for next year. My first retreat is coming up March 23 to 28 at Glorietta um, Conference Center. In It's just slightly north of Santa Fe in New Mexico. I do have a Jumpstart 2014 conference in Sedona, Arizona, the 9th through the 11th of January. And then I have a May uh, retreat coming as well, the 18th. Um, through the 23rd. And also sign up for my free newsletter. It comes out twice a week, Fridays and Monday mornings, and I have lots of tips every single newsletter. I have a health tip, a recipe. Um, I always post my events um, that are coming and um, uh, different uh, political things even where you can take action <laughs> in the world to make it a better place. So it's a um, good thing to sign up for as well. And then you'll stay uh, in touch with events that are coming. 